Finally, the sequel to Evangelion 2.0 is here at last. And my initial reaction when going into the film? Yes! Oh my god, I can't wait! Yeah! And my reaction after seeing the film? And I know I've been slacking on my anime reviews. I apologize profusely. I promise I'll get to one as soon as I can I have two more exams to take and then I'm free as a bird so I can watch more animes like I used to But to hold you guys off until then I present my review of the highly anticipated Evangelion 3.0 so the plot of Evangelion 3.0 or 3.33 However, you want to say it is it takes place 14 years after the events of the previous film and it follows Shinji who has just woken up from a long 14 years sleep trying to figure out what has happened within those 14 years. Now I've been waiting and anticipating this film ever since the credits started rolling in Evangelion 2.0. I mean Evangelion 2.0 just kicked it into high gear and rose the stakes from the first movie in character development, in story, in action, in animation, in everything. It was superb throughout and I can almost say it's like the Dark Knight in a sense. And to give a comparison this series is really following the Dark Knight trilogies in more ways than one sadly because because the third movie, I'm not gonna lie, I was like this. I mean, I just left the movie very let down and disappointed. I mean, it's not a terrible movie. I didn't feel like, oh man, this is a piece of shit. But I just felt like this movie left out so much and explained so little. It just leaves you with a dumbfounded look on your face. Like, what just happened? Why is this happening? How did this happen? I mean, they explained it a little bit, but it's not enough. But before we talk about the things I didn't really like in this film, let's talk about some of the good qualities. And the first one that really stands out, and again, I don't know why I keep mentioning this, but I feel like it's should be recognized because it is really good and that is the animation it is superb once again they have stepped their game up from the second film it's even better granted it's a little darker than the first film not only in tone but in overall appearance there were some scenes that I couldn't really tell what was on the screen because it was just so dark but the animation for the most part was handled very well and once again going hand in hand with the animation the action scenes were handled spectacularly were they better than two no, but it was still entertaining. The action scenes were pretty cool to watch. And lastly, and probably the biggest pro of this movie, is that for the first time ever, Shinji Ikari is a 100%, 100% relatable character in every sense of the word. I mean, he's been asleep for 14 years, so he's kind of confused about what's going on. So when he's like, oh my god, what's going on? What, what is happening? Why are you guys like this? What, what is happening? You are also like, oh my god, what's going on? What, what is happening? Why are you guys like this? So what what is happening so when things are confusing to Shinji it's confusing to you and when things are sad to Shinji they're sad to you I was on this journey with them trying to unravel what has happened in the last 14 years and Shinji's no longer a whiny little bitch anymore I mean yeah in the second film they show a growth in his character he's becoming more stronger but they still had scenes where he's like no I can't believe in myself I'm kind of sad but in this film like when shit hits the fan and they're in danger the first thing he says is how can I help you you. What can I do to help? And it just showed me that he has grown as a character. He's willing to fight now. And that's the kind of character I always wanted Shinji to be. And they finally brought it in Evangelion 3.0. But sadly, those are the only pros that I have for this movie. The rest are things I really didn't like about it. Now the first thing is the plot. Now I'm not going to spoil anything for you guys, I promise. But when you go into this film, do not go into this film expecting the scenes that you saw in the post credits of Evangelion 2.0. Nothing in that little teaser from Evangelion 2.0 is in this film. And for me, I just felt like that's a bait and switch and not only that, that is terrible marketing. And the movie sort of negates the ending of Evangelion 2. Now I can't really say how Evangelion 2 ends because it will give away a big spoiler in Evangelion 3, but at the end end of Evangelion 2, they stopped an event from happening, but in this film, the event actually happened regardless. So I was thinking to myself, wait a minute, that event was negated at the end of Evangelion 2, yet it happened? I mean, 
How? It just leaves you with more questions and not only that, they skim over answering most of your questions. Not only do they skim over explaining important details, but character development was sorely lacking in this film. Especially from the characters that we grew to love in the first and second film. I mean we barely see Masato, and Masato is barely herself in this film. And her development goes hand in hand with the fact that they don't explain what has happened in the last 14 years that led her to become the character character that she is now. She is literally a shell of her former self. In this film, she's stoic, she's bland, she's always serious. This is not the Masato that I remember. The Masato that I know, yes, when the situation called for it, she can be serious. But she also was lighthearted, she was comical, she gave us a little bit of fan service, and she still had faith in humanity. She still had faith that we can come out of this terrible situation. In this film, None of those elements are shown at all. But fortunately, in one scene, we did get to see the old Misato again for just a brief moment. And when I saw that scene, I actually smiled at it because I do miss the old Misato. I missed her liveliness. I missed her energy. I missed her positivity. It's the one thing that kept the show grounded in a sense. And not only is Misato's development sorely lacking, but other prevalent characters from the series as well, like Dr. Ritsuko, her development was so pushed to the side that she has now become a secondary character, which really sucks because she plays a prevalent role not only in the original series, but in these new films. Also Asuka. Now I might not have liked her character in the original series, but I was growing to like her in Evangelion 2.0. It actually showed a more vulnerable side to her and I actually liked seeing that. But in this film, she's just your equivalent badass female character with no depth at all. I mean, she just comes in, does an action scene, and then she leaves. That is literally her character in this entire film. There was no emotional moment for her. There was no moment where she was actually bonding with a character. Nothing at all. But the two characters that I really felt got gypped for development was Mari and Rei. I'm gonna start with Mari first. This really hurt because if it wasn't for her being on the cover of Evangelion 2.0, I probably would have never watched the series ever again. But because she was on the cover and she was a new character, I was very interested to see what this character has to do with the series, where she comes into play, and I want to see that grow as the series grows as well. And in 2, man, she was a badass. She was the one thing that pulled me into the movie from the get-go. In this one, it felt like her presence was a cameo, honestly. Her only reason for being there is to provide backup for Asuka. That's it. I mean, they removed her development, they removed her badassery, and what we have left is a hollow shell of a character that barely makes a blip on the radar in this movie. If that was her character in Evangelion 2.0, I probably would have never even noticed her. But the biggest offense of this movie is the negation of Rey's development. We took two movies to develop the character of Rey and actually make it really good. But in this film, they negate everything from those two movies. All that development, gone. You know how much that hurt to see? I felt like Shinji. I felt hurt. I felt broken hearted. All that time built to know this character, to bond with this character, to build a connection to this character, gone. And that's mainly the biggest problems of this film. The lack of explanation of what happened in the past 14 years and the total lack of development for all of the characters. Now I know you all want me to talk about this and that is the relationship between Shinji and Karu. I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right so correct me if I'm wrong. And I got a little story to tell you guys about this relationship. When I first saw the series, I hated it. I did not like it at all. It really felt like they were going down a yaoi shonen eye route that I wasn't for at all. But honestly, I really didn't hate their relationship as much as I thought I would in this film. This time it felt like they were building more of a friendship, although I think Kaoru wanted more, but Shinji really saw a friend in Kaoru, and I really liked that because throughout the entire series, Shinji just is trying to be accepted and Karu kind of sees him for what he really is, and so he can open up to Karu. In fact, some of my favorite moments in this film is when they're bonding over the piano, which looks gorgeous. But another thing that's wrong with this is they don't really develop the character of Karu enough for me to really give a damn. For me, it felt like this film was more of a build-up to the next film instead of its own standalone film, and I know what you're all gonna say, it was supposed to be a double feature, and it didn't happen that way, and to its credit, it was made as if it was gonna be a double feature, but we didn't get the double feature. So overall guys, I'm not even gonna sugarcoat it for you. I was very let down and disappointed by this film. And it's not because of high expectations. It's because this film lacks in many aspects that the other films had and did so greatly in, such as character depth, 
character relations, character development, character bonding, great animation, kick-ass action scenes, and a compelling story. This film had about two of those seven things, and I really felt like they skimmed over explaining what has happened in the past 14 years and actually made us feel the weight of them and actually make us care. So overall, I'm going to give this film, sadly, a two out of five stars. It's an easily forgettable film. And it really hurts to give that rating because I was so excited to see the third one. I was looking forward to it and I was just let down in every aspect. And what hurts the most is that you still need to see this film. I mean, it's a vital piece to the entire Evangelion reboot series. So if you have seen the first two, you have to see the third one to see how the story unfolds. But the truth is, after you see this one, you're not going to remember it in like a couple days or even a couple of hours. But anyway, what did you guys think of this anime film? Did you like it a lot? Or did you agree with my points and felt like this anime film was sorely lacking in so many aspects? And I'll also post a link to the film in the description box below for you guys if you want to go see it. And let me know what is your favorite moment from Evangelion. Original TV show, movies, what have you. Comment below, let me know. Also, since I have the time to talk about it, I'll be doing my live chat today from 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And the reason for this is because on the 30th, on the last day of the month, I won't have time to do a live chat because I'm going to go on a retreat for Nightcast. And also, I have an important exam on that day that's from 7 to 9, so I won't have any time to do anything. So I'm going to do it today, get out of the way, so you guys can post questions. I'll also talk about Evangelion 3.0 in more detail in that video, maybe even do a little more spoiler talk. If you guys want that, you can let me know in the description. But until the live chat later on tonight, guys, hit that subscribe button if you're new to my channel. Welcome to the Black Critic Guy. Like this video if you really enjoyed it. Check out my other videos as well. And I'm Tony Wally II from the Black Critic Guy. Until then, peace, YouTube.